In this video, we'll talk about what does carb cycling involve. Knowing the science behind why carb cycling works is important for anyone considering adopting this regime. Without understanding the principles of this diet, it's difficult to follow it correctly. Here, we look at the basics so you can be well informed. Carb cycling, the basics. Carb cycling is relatively new in terms of dietary approaches. It is backed up by science based on carbohydrate manipulation's biological mechanisms. Yet, there are few official studies which have directly investigated carb cycling diets. Many people have found this regime a successful one, however. Elite athletes have been using this method for years to boost their performance. Dieters are also starting to recognize the benefits. So, how does carb cycling work? Essentially, this way of eating aims to match up the body's requirement for glucose or calories. For instance, it supplies carbohydrates on days of intense training or workouts. It achieves this by planning in days of high carbohydrate intake on those days. High carbohydrate days refuel glycogen in the muscles. This too can reduce breakdown of the muscles and improve sporting performance. When high carbohydrate periods are strategically planned, it's possible to boost the functioning of appetite regulating hormones. Ghrelin and leptin are both hormones associated with hunger and appetite. Both can be better controlled with carb cycling diets. On low carbohydrate days, the body switches to a different way of producing energy. Without the glucose from carbs to fuel it, it predominantly begins to burn fat. This, in turn, helps to improve the body's metabolic flexibility. It also helps the body to adapt more effectively to burning fat as a fuel source over the long term. Another major element in carb cycling is how it allows insulin to be manipulated. If you target your carbs around your workouts, it can improve your body's sensitivity to insulin. This is a sign of good health. It helps to protect against conditions like diabetes. It also helps to maximize the many benefits that carbohydrates provide. Is carb cycling the same as keto? Many people think that the keto diet and carb cycling are the same things. This isn't true. Although there are some similarities, the two regimes are very different. The keto diet is extremely low in carbohydrates. It also involves eating a lot of good fats and moderate amounts of protein. The main aim of the keto diet is to burn fat as fuel by getting into ketosis. Usually, carb cycling involves eating more carbs than you would have in the classic keto diet. It also doesn't involve eating the same large amount of fats. Therefore, ketosis isn't the aim of a carb cycling regime. Nevertheless, there are some similarities. Both emphasize the management of carbohydrate intake. Also, both diets involve counting macros. Macros are the specific number of gram of fats, protein, and carbs you eat every day. This means that some people combine both regimes. This is known as keto cycling. The keto cycling protocol involves eating a keto diet on most days. These will be interspersed with either one or two days of eating more carbs. These are called refeeding days. They are designed to break the ketosis. By doing this, dieters can receive the benefits of consuming carbohydrates. Their fiber intake is increased, their athletic performance is fueled, and their diet is more varied. Some nutritional experts say that restricting carbs in the long term could impact on certain hormones. Insulin and thyroid hormones are vital for healthy body composition. If you try keto cycling, balance in these hormones could be better maintained. This provides a distinct advantage over the standard keto diet in which carbs are restricted over an extended period. Not only that, but the common problems associated with keto diets are reduced or eliminated. Issues such as bad breath don't become prevalent since some carbs are still being consumed regularly. In this video, we'll talk about what does a carb cycling diet look like. Carb cycling involves tracking macros with a food journal or app. You must work out the number of grams of carbohydrates you'll need to eat every day. This may not be as easy as you imagined. The amount of carbs you should eat will be individual to you. You need to bear several factors in mind. We'll look more closely at those later. For now, let's take a closer look at what a standard carb cycling diet looks like. What do I eat on a high carb day? On a high carb day, you will usually obtain around 60% of your calories from complex carbohydrates. That means, if you're eating around 1500 calories daily, around 900 calories are complex carbs. If you're doing high energy workouts like interval training, long distance running or sprints, you can add in more carbs. These should take the right form though. You shouldn't be adding donuts or cake into your regime. Instead, you should give yourself an additional serving of legumes, fruits, or whole grains. The latter are all complex carbs. 
This means they break down more slowly for a slower release of energy. Simple carbs like sugary cookies and candies break down quickly. This means that you get a super fast energy rush, followed by a crash. You should primarily eat complex carbohydrates on a carb cycling regime. If you find that you're struggling to cope with your athletic workouts, try adding another serving to your diet. You should only do this on days when you're hitting the gym though. What do I eat on a low carb day? On days when you're not working out or doing low key exercise, have a low carb day. On this kind of day, you should switch a couple of your usual carb servings with vegetables. You should also switch some of those carbs with healthy fats or proteins. Alternatively, you could use a low carb day as a starting point from which to calculate your high carb days. Usually, 50 grams of carbs daily is enough to reach ketosis. Therefore, you could begin by consuming 50 grams of carbs on low carb days. You can then work up from there, maxing out at 200 grams of carbs daily. Avoiding the transactional food mindset is very important, however. Thoughts like 30 minutes more running means I can eat more carbs can be dangerous. It leads to a difficult and disordered relationship with eating and food. Nevertheless, eating more carbs some days with fewer carbs on other days is how the body regulates itself naturally. Therefore, reducing carbs offers benefits that you can take advantage of. What does a week-long carb cycling plan look like? The concept of carb cycling involves eating minimal carbs for two days consecutively. This will be followed by a day of eating more carbs. There is a reason for this. When the stored reserves of carbs are due to run out, energy is recharged thanks to a high carb day. This speeds the metabolism and leads to more fat loss. If you reduce your carbs over two days, your fat stores will be used for energy. Your body will also enter a catabolic state. This means the body starts to use muscle tissue to derive energy from the protein in your muscles. It's important to know what you're eating over a week if you're planning the carb cycle. Here is a sample seven day plan to ensure you obtain all the essential nutrients. You also get enough variety so you don't get bored with your meals. If you can adhere to this plan for 30 days, you should experience weight loss benefits. Day one, a low carb day. Breakfast, almond and citrus fruit salad mixed with berries and yogurt, snack, an apple and a protein bar. Lunch, salad made with 50 grams of quinoa, 100 grams of peas and tomatoes and two hard boiled eggs. Snack, a banana and a scoop of walnuts. Dinner, a sliced stir fried chicken breast with sliced carrots, courgettes and green beans. Served with 70 grams of quinoa. Snack, two oat cakes. Calorie total, 1,880. Carbs total, 226 grams. Protein total, 108 grams. Fat total, 67 grams. Day two, low carb day. Breakfast, seed and apple muesli made with two tablespoons of rolled oats, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, and pumpkin seeds. Serve with two tablespoons of natural yogurt and a small apple. Snack, a banana and a scoop of walnuts. Lunch, a wholemeal pita stuffed with half an avocado, one tablespoon of cottage cheese, and tuna. Snack, a pear. Dinner, a grilled salmon steak with half a sliced lime on top. Serve with 100 grams broccoli, 70 grams of quinoa, and 70 grams of peas. Snack, an apple. Calorie total, 1,891. Carbs total, 170 grams. Protein total, 131 grams. Fat total, 81 grams. Day three, high carb day. Breakfast, 60 grams of oats, soaked in water with 200 grams of berries. Serve with a pot of natural yogurt and a tablespoon of sunflower seeds. Snack, a peach. Lunch, a baked potato stuffed with a tablespoon of hummus. Served with a salad made from sliced cucumber, tomato, red pepper, and mixed leaves. A banana. Snack, a protein bar and an apple. Dinner, a grilled cod filet served with 250 grams of boiled potatoes. 100 grams of carrots and peas. Snack, three oat cakes. Calorie total, 1,801. Carbs total, 323 grams. Protein total, 78 grams. Fat total, 40 grams. Day four, low carb day. Breakfast, three eggs beaten and two tablespoons of natural yogurt. Add a half a red pepper, half a courgette, and half an onion as well as one tablespoon of peas. Cook in a pan. Snack, an apple and a handful of pumpkin seeds. Lunch, a can of salmon mixed with a can of butter beans. Served with a salad of lettuce leaves, tomato, sugar snap peas, and onion. Snack, a nectarine. Dinner, a grilled turkey breast with grilled courgette, carrot, red pepper, and onion. Snack, a banana and 80 grams of grapes. Calorie total, 1,812. Carbs total, 159 grams. Protein total, 143 grams. 
Fat total, 72 grams. Day five, low carb day. Breakfast, two boiled eggs with two whole meal pita slices spread with marmite and butter. Snack, an apple and a pear. Lunch, avocado and tuna mash served with salad leaves, cucumber, tomato, carrot, and courgette. Snack, a piece and an oat cake topped with cucumber and cottage cheese. Dinner, a can of salmon mixed with a can of chopped tomatoes. Tomato puree, carrot, red pepper, and courgettes. Simmered for 10 minutes and served. Snack, a banana. Calorie total, 1,804. Carbs total, 165 grams. Protein total, 124 grams. Fat total, 77 grams. Day six, high carb day. Breakfast, five tablespoons of natural yogurt. Mixed with 50 grams of rolled oats, 200 grams of berries, one tablespoon of honey and a sliced pear. Snack, a wholemeal pita bread stuffed with tomato and cottage cheese. Lunch, a chickpea salad made with a half a can of chickpeas. Snack, four oat cakes with a sliced apple and peanut butter. Dinner, a grilled chicken breast with steamed broccoli, 70 grams of quinoa and 100 grams of green beans. Snack, a banana. Calorie total, 1,845. Carbs total, 249 grams. Protein total, 122 grams. Fat total, 44 grams. Day seven, low carb day. Breakfast, two poached eggs with two portobello mushrooms and two tomatoes. Snack, a pot of natural yogurt, an orange and a peach. Lunch, a pita stuffed with cottage cheese, avocado, cucumber, tomato, lettuce, and peanut butter. Snack, an apple with a handful of sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds. Dinner, poached salmon with a courgette, 200 grams tomatoes, and sugar snap peas. Snack, a banana, and two oat cakes. Calorie total, 1,820. Carbs total, 157 grams. Protein total, 98 grams. Fat total, 94 grams.